I'm Debbie Lyons Blythe, and I'm a wife, a mother, and a cattle rancher in the Flint Hills of Kansas. Uh, my husband and I live on the land that his family homesteaded back in 1890. And I'm standing in some of that land, uh, the grassland, which is the group of cattle that have already calved. Spring is calving season for us, and this is the beginning of spring. We have approximately 100 calves already born, and we've got approximately 100 more yet to be born. We also have five kids. Uh, they're all teenagers except one. The oldest is a uh, sophomore at Kansas State University, and she's 20. We have four in high school at our local school. Spring is calving season in the Flint Hills, and as you can see behind me, uh, there's a lot of baby calves here. So that's what takes up most of my day right now, is taking care of the cows that are still pregnant and the heifers. Heifer is a cow that hasn't had a calf. She's usually about two years old. They often need a little extra care when they're calving to pay attention to make sure that they can handle it on their own and that they know what to do. But uh, for the most part, we try to calve our cows out on grass without a lot of extra attention to them, but we do feed them a little extra nutrition. Uh, we bale our own hay, bale our own alfalfa, and alfalfa is one of the most important protein sources to these cows in order to keep them in good shape to raise these calves. The calls that you can hear behind me are just the cows and calves calling to each other, making sure where they're at. Uh, a cow, just like a mom, has lots of different calls that she makes. And uh, the call that you hear them making right now is just to find out where their calf is laying. And uh, since I've come into the, into the pasture, they just want to locate their calf and, and know that their calf is okay and that I'm not after them. You hear the babies calling a little bit too, and that's not a call of distress, but it's also trying to locate where their mama is. The Flint Hills of Kansas is where our, our ranch is located, and it's a really unique place. The Flint Hills is one of only three locations in the world that has the original grass still intact. For the most part, the grass grows because it's too hard to farm here. Uh, as the pioneers crossed these hills and uh, came upon this beautiful grassland, they tried to tear up the grass and farm it, but the topsoil is too shallow and there's a layer of rock that's very close to the surface. So they had to clear the rock and it was, it was too difficult to do and it was just easier to grow grass. And as they tried to do that, they realized that their livestock really received a lot of nutrition from this grass and grew fat. The Indians had already learned that the buffalo really grew fat on this grass, and this area was finally settled in basically a way that it became a cow town, that this whole area is cow country. Still to this day, it is absolutely cow country, and we're nearing now the season when millions of cattle will be turned out onto this grass for the summer. This is one of our pastures where we'll put our, our commercial heifer development program heifers and it's about two miles square, uh, which is an awful lot of grass in, in one location. Uh, there's, so for two miles there are no, no power lines, no roads, no fences. Some of the things that are happening now in the spring though in the Flint Hills of Kansas, one of the most important things is we are burning the prairie. The reason that we burn the prairie is to control the invasive shrubs and trees. One of the things that will take over this grass and totally ruin it is cedar trees. And cedar trees really are no good for this area. They don't sequester much carbon. They, uh, nothing eats them that of any economic value. So if cedar trees take over your pasture, you really have uh, just lost that land. If you're interested in learning more about our cattle ranch and what we do for the rest of the time during the year, please check out my blog. It's kansascattleranch.blogspot.com. Also, I try to uh, maintain some information on YouTube. You'll find that information on my blog as well. In addition, I post recipes from time to time, and some of those recipes are things that we cook every single day. Uh, that we eat beef and, and I feed it to my kids for good nutritional value and also because it's very plentiful around here. I've really enjoyed showing you about, a little bit about my day. Thank you for taking the time to watch and I hope you read my blog. Thank you.